everyone and welcome to this week's episode of my Disney photo editing series. This week I'm going to be showing you guys how to edit a picture from Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, this is actually how I go about editing all my Pirates of the Caribbean shots. I'm going to be using a bunch of the techniques I've shown in previous videos. So if you haven't seen those videos yet, go ahead and stop this one and watch those first and then come back to this because they're going to be a lot of help in uh, how I edit this picture. So we're just going to dive right in. And I've already selected the pirate shot that I want to edit and I pulled it up in Lightroom and the very first thing I do when I'm in Lightroom working on a photo is I go ahead and enable my profile correction and check the remove chromatic aberration button and then with Pirates of the Caribbean the first thing you'll notice is that they're way too orange all of the pirate shots are typically too orange the light they use in there it looks nice in person but it photographs horrible so you can you know sit here and try and pick all these different uh, white balances but none of them really are that great I always just go down to custom and go to the blue side because it's just too warm otherwise so I'm gonna put it at 2000 and I'm gonna change the tint uh, I want to get rid of all that magenta so we'll do probably pretty heavy maybe like minus 39 that's good and then I'm going to start messing with these sliders here. So I'm going to pull some highlights out. I'm going to bring up the shadows. And I'm going to, then I'm going to make the darks a little more inky. The good thing about when you pull up the shadows and then pull back the blacks, you, you get kind of those inky deep shadows. So I like to, to do that, pull up the shadows first and then dial them back with uh, the black slider. Uh, that looks pretty good. I'm not even going to touch the white slider. Everything looks okay as far as the whites. Um, I never touch the clarity, vibrance, or saturation sliders pretty much ever. You can ignore those. Um, but here's where we're going to get into uh, a little bit more detailed editing on this shot. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the Hue tab. And I'm going to change the hue of some of these colors to be more in line with what I'm looking for. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my red and I'm going to change the hue on that. And you want to pay attention kind of in the hat, on the shirt, on the belt. That's really what I'm what I'm adjusting with this slider. And then we'll also touch on the magenta a little bit. Especially on these dark ride shots, your magentas tend to be in your shadow areas. Uh, they get quite magenta in fact. So I try to pay attention to that and fix that when I can. Uh, in this case, I'm just changing the hue of the magenta. I'm not actually getting rid of the magenta itself. Um, so that's all I want to touch there. I'm going to change the saturation of a couple of these colors. Uh, let's do the orange first. And we're going to do a big adjustment back to dial out a lot of that color. And then the same with the yellows. Uh, right about there. Can add a little bit more red in. That's good for that. Next, we're going to go to the luminance tab. And luminance, uh, really, the best way to explain it is it, it changes the brightness of the color that you're adjusting. So in this case, you see I'm messing with the red. If I pull the luminance down, it makes it a darker red. If I make it, if I go to the right, it makes it a brighter red. I'm actually going to dial mine way back. That's pretty good. We'll touch the oranges. Uh, right about there. Yellow. A light adjustment and again the magentas pull that back because I really don't want those to stand out in my shot now keep in mind this isn't looking that great yet but I have a reason for doing it this way I'm, I'm getting rid of a lot of my colors and only keeping certain colors so that when I get into Photoshop in a minute I'm gonna add back a lot of those colors but more specifically how I like them so don't get don't get worried yet um, I never touch noise reduction in Lightroom. It's too smeary, so I just leave that at the default. Uh, one thing that you can do is our shadows have kind of got a greenish 
or magenta look rather. Um, so you can adjust the shadows here if need be. Um, now that I'm actually looking at it, I think they were a little to the green side, so I'm going to push a little more magenta in. And then finally, I always like to bump the saturation on the blue primaries a little bit. It kind of gives a little bit of pop to the image. Um, but that's all I'm going to do here in Lightroom. So we're going to go ahead and take this over into Photoshop, which is where the real bulk of the work does gets done. Um, so let's open that up now and we'll get started on that. All right, so now that we've got the image in Photoshop, uh, you'll notice that basically what I've built is kind of a, a flat file. I, I didn't want anything with a ton of contrast or a ton of color information. I just wanted something that wasn't completely desaturated but was really flat looking that I could work with and, and build up the color and the light in the scene the way that I want to do it. Um, so the very first thing I'm going to do now that I'm in Photoshop is I'm going to go to the color balance adjustment tool and I'm just going to do some light mid-tone adjustments. Adjust my cyan and pump a little bit of blue. Maybe not even that much, maybe like plus one. That looks good. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a curve adjustment layer and I'm going to bring the midpoint down ever so slightly just to give it uh, kind of a little bit more contrast so it's not quite as bright. There's a before, there's the after. You see it's a really slight adjustment, nothing too major, um, but it's going to make a big impact as we go along. So the very next thing that I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go ahead and desaturate the yellow on the dog. I'm going to use a hue saturation adjustment layer. And I'm going to use the tool here, click on it, and click on the dog and drag it to my left to desaturate the yellows on the dog and get him kind of a nice gray looking color. Invert the mask. I'm going to paint just where the dog is so that hue saturation adjustment layer only affects, oops, change my opacity to 100. So I am only affecting the dog and nothing else. And you can probably take your time a little better with stuff like this. I'm doing it real quickly for the sake of the video. All right, that's pretty good. So the next thing I actually want to do is go back to my original image in Lightroom. And you can see here with the original orange, real orange version of this, the lantern is actually one thing that looks really good in the image. So I'm just going to edit this into Photoshop, this copy. And hopefully it's pretty quick here. Wasn't too bad. Oops. And I'm just going to select that copy it and paste it oops got two versions of it paste it on top and we're going to create a mask invert our mask and we're just going to paint in just where that lantern is this is actually going to end up being kind of the colors that we use to build this scene with they're going to be these uh, yellows and oranges that are in the lantern actually messed up a little bit on the lantern I don't want to Color that in, just the actual fire in the middle is the part that I wanted to mask. So that looks pretty good right there. Alright, so now the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to work on their faces and their skin tones a little bit. Uh, one thing that would happen with this lantern putting off the orange and yellow light is you would kind of get uh, that color cast from that onto their faces and their skin. Uh, so I'm actually going to add that in with a photo, fil photo filter adjustment. Uh, so go ahead and click the photo filter adjustment layer and we're going to change it to a warming filter 81. You'll see kind of the color that that gives and we're going to use that to kind of warm up the skin tones a little bit to match the glow from the lantern and the density as you can see if you move it more then you get kind of more intense and less intense um, but I'm going to put it maybe around 35% looks pretty good and I'm gonna invert my mask and I'm gonna paint just over the skin 100% opacity is fine Oops. 
There we go. See, it's just adding a little bit of warmth. It kind of made their skin almost uh, a gray, kind of dead look from the adjustments we made, and we don't want that, so we're adding some of that color back in now. Makes a big, big impact on the sky here in the middle. And then we're going to do one more photo filter. And this time we're going to add a little bit of red. Oops, wrong one. Red. And we're not going to do nearly as much. Maybe like, I'm not sure I understand. Go away, Cortana. Sorry about that. So we're going to put it at like maybe 8%. That's good. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll mask only on the skin. You can see it's really, it's really subtle. And I'll group it together when I'm done so you can see. But I think it really makes the skin look more realistic in the scene. Let's group those two together. And that was the before, and that's the after. And you can see the skin looks a lot better, a lot more lively now after doing that. So now the next thing we're actually going to focus on is adding some colored light to the scene. Obviously we've added a little bit of color to the skin but that lantern is going to be putting off quite a bit of light and glow on the stone as well. So what we'll do is we'll create a new blank layer, control shift in, and just hit OK. And now we've got a blank layer to work with. And I'm actually going to start by changing this to overlay. And then I'm going to select kind of one of this yellow colors, the light. Let's just look at it here. And maybe something like that is pretty good for the color of light that we're going to be painting. And we select our brush tool and make it nice and big and change the opacity to around 10%, maybe even 5% if you want to do it kind of build up because that's what we're going to do. We're going to paint the light and build it up. And I'm just going to start painting from the lantern and kind of trying to emulate what the light would do in the scene. I'll just start painting. Paint a little bit down here. A little bit over there. Not as much here because as, as you get further away from the lantern, obviously the light is going to fall off. So you want it to be more intense here and then less intense as the light goes away. You could also do it with a gradient, which I do sometimes by creating color gradients. But this way is a lot faster. And to be honest, I like the results just as much. So this is the way I'm going to show you how to do it. And that's probably enough yellow for now. Let's also create another blank layer and we'll use, actually I have this orange color here that we can use. And we're going to do the same thing, except this time, don't forget to change your, your blending mode, but this time we're going to do soft light. And we're going to start painting in the orange as well. See, we're starting to get a really nice glow effect on the on the stone there. Just gonna go over a couple areas. Where I think it's important. That looks pretty nice, but I'm gonna go back to both of these and I'm gonna adjust the opacity just a little bit. Just to fine tune it. That looks pretty solid. And the next thing I notice is I've actually got kind of too much yellow on these guys here and the glows. So I'm going to create a hue saturation adjustment layer. And I'm going to change to my yellow channel. And I'm going to pull the saturation down a little bit. Minus 15 looks good actually. And I'm going to invert and then just paint only on the areas where I want to get rid of. And you can actually increase your opacity for this so it goes quicker. Especially on his shirt, I actually like those stripes to look kind of white. 
it's not perfectly realistic, but it looks pretty good in the end this way, I think. And then we'll just keep masking out some of these areas. Lower the opacity and mask out a few other spots. All right, and that's pretty good for now. Next thing I'm gonna do is I am actually going to create a luminosity mask to adjust the midtones in my image. So I'm gonna use the midtones three and click that to create my selection. And I'm gonna create a level adjustment. And you'll see now we've got a mask for our midtones. And we'll just double tap on that and we'll make an adjustment. I'm going to pull up my midtones a little bit and make those a little brighter. And the highlights, I'm going to leave mostly alone. And the shadows, I'm going to do maybe make those two, make it just a little bit darker, not too much. You want to be careful not to overdo that. All right, so we're starting to get a lot closer now, but the next thing I want to do uh, to really dial in the colors uh, to be correct the way that I want them to look is I'm going to create another adjustment layer. This time I'm going to do a selective color adjustment layer. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to adjust each of the colors individually, similarly to how we did in Lightroom earlier. Um, but this will help me to, to make the colors kind of look exactly how I want to, and I can target each color individually as well as my whites, neutrals, and blacks separately. So we'll start with the reds. And I'm actually going to put cyan in to the red a little bit. And we'll take a little bit of yellow out as well. Remember this is affecting just your red colors. We'll move on to the yellows. And we're going to add cyan, or rather subtract, I'm sorry. Um, that's pretty good. Magenta is fine. I, I, I leave the magenta green slider alone a lot because at least with my camera, those colors seem to be pretty, pretty spot on, so I typically don't have to do as many adjustments on those. So let's touch the yellows. I actually want the yellows to be more yellow. Plus 12 looks pretty good. And then there's no green cyans or blues. There's a little bit of magenta in the shadows. Do just a, really up here is where it's affecting the most. Do just a slight adjustment there. That's probably even too much. It's good. And then I'm going to mess with my neutrals a little bit. That's going to affect all of the colors, but it's only going to do so really in the neutral tonal ranges. Uh, so we'll do... Uh, maybe... 7% on the cyan. Add a little bit of magenta, 2%, and then let's dial back on the yellow, 7%. That's, that's pretty solid. And that's the before and that's the after, and you'll see we're really, really adjusting the colors for the whole image, kind of creating a mood from the lighting, really trying to blend it all together. Um, I actually want to build a little bit more light now that I've done that, so I'm going to do another control shift in, create a new layer, and I want to use an orange color, but I want kind of a softer orange, because I'm going to build up more over here, and we'll start painting, and put your opacity, maybe 10%, oops, And don't forget to change to the soft light adjustment. And we'll just start painting in some of this light building up. This is really 
the part that makes the image come alive is is this light and just spending the time to you know paint it in right and make it look make it look realistic uh, I would spend a lot more time on it if it weren't for the sake of the video and me trying to save time but I'm trying to give you a general idea at least and we'll put a little bit on the dog because he needs a little bit of not too much though because he's a lot further from the lantern than these guys and then we'll adjust the opacity once again just to kind of blend it in and the other thing that you can do on top of that is you can create a mask and then do the image apply image and then that gives you even more control over the light because it creates a mask of the image itself I actually really like the way that it helps you blend in especially with this light painting I'm actually gonna paint a little bit more in now that I added that but it really helps blend it in and make it nice and subtle and realistic looking a few more areas alright that looks pretty solid uh, the one thing that I am noticing is we've got kind of this greenish tone here in the back which doesn't really match with the rest of the scene the gel is supposed to be on fire so that green doesn't really make a lot of sense so I'm gonna create a hue saturation adjustment layer once again and I'm actually gonna use my pointer once again click there and I'm gonna I'm gonna bump up the saturation first of all but then I'm gonna use this hue slider to change the hue in the background there to match more appropriately with the gel being on fire uh, so I want something that's more kind of that orangey red color and then I'll pull the saturation accordingly and then we're going to invert and we're just going to paint in our mask only in those areas so I'll just paint quickly again if you were doing this something you're going to put out there on the web spend more time than I am I'm just going to paint kind of in between the bars I would make sure not to get these bars or anything else if you want to get the hand very quickly and I'd probably dial back the opacity a little bit so it's not quite as big of an adjustment alright that looks pretty solid uh, the next thing that I am now going to do is actually I'm going to get rid of some of the noise in our shadow areas because that with dark rides is where most of your noise is going to be is in the shadow areas uh, I use a program from uh, image nomic called noiseware so let me show you how that works if you don't have that you can use the built-in Photoshop uh, option um, but this is the way that I prefer so I basically created a stamp visible layer and I'm gonna go to my filter image nomic noiseware and I don't care about anything else all I'm gonna do is apply this to the to the shadow area so I typically will just click on the default and hit OK. It kills all the detail, but again, that doesn't matter. I'm going to temporarily hide that. And I'm going to click on my dark 5 button for my uh, luminosity mask, and you see it's going to select all of my super dark shadow areas. And then I'm going to use the create mask button on the denoised stamp visible layer that I just created. And now I have denoised just the areas where there are shadows. So it doesn't affect any of the areas where I, there's light, basically, which is really nice because that's where all my detail is actually at. So kind of before, and let me see if I can zoom in so you can get a better look. So you've got quite a bit of uh, noise in the shadow areas there, and then it, it cleans up quite a bit of that. So that's really nice. Uh, finally, I'm going to sharpen my image, so I'll create another stamp visible layer. And we're going to go to Filter, Sharpen, Smart Sharpen. Since it's a dark ride, I typically keep the sharpening on the light side of things. So I'll do 100%, maybe 1.2 pixels on the radius. 
and I'm going to adjust the reduce noise to about 40%, make sure it's on lens blur, and hit OK. And then to refine the sharpening, I'm going to control click on this layer. Oops, go to channels, control click on the layer. And I'm going to create a mask on my layer that I just sharpened. And I'm going to alt click on my mask. And I'm going to go to filter, stylize, find edges. Press control I to invert the mask. Press control L. And I'm going to drag these sliders on my levels until I've got kind of a defined image where the edges are are white as you can get them to be and then the blacks are kind of a, a, as black as you can get them to be because the white areas are going to be what's sharpened and then everything else isn't. So I'm only trying to sharpen the edges of my details and that looks pretty decent and then just to even that out I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and I'll do a blur of about five pixels. That just cleans up all the noise which is really essential on these dark ride shots. So there you have it. Uh, let's just group all this together until we can look at our before and after. And that's our before. Well, our before when we started in Photoshop. And that's our after. So you see, painting the light really makes a big difference on this scene here. Um, I'm actually going to show you my final, final version that I did where I actually took the time to do all my masking right. Uh, so you can see uh, what a big difference that makes. And I'd love to hear what you guys think of this episode. I'd love to see your pictures after you use these techniques, see what you guys come up with. And be sure to leave any feedback or comments that you have uh, on the YouTube channel below. And hope to see you guys next week. Thanks for watching.